You can now build entire movies shot by shot using my new free workflow. Just give it reference images of your characters and location and the workflow automatically creates a virtual environment where you can direct your scenes with simple text prompts. The workflow will keep the likeness of your characters without the need of training an additional model like a Laura and any style works. Realistic, anime, claymation, you name it. You can also use pose references or your own storyboard scribbles for more precise control. All of this is based on open source models, so you can run everything on your own computer for free. So let's start building a movie. I've drawn dozens of storyboards for my film projects in the past and I love this approach to filmmaking. Because you don't just get an idea of your final movie, you start living and exploring this world. But AI models can take this concept even further, allowing you to generate the final shots with lighting, framing and the final characters. This is made possible by the Gwen Image Edit model. It's one of these new instruction-based image models that understand concepts in images, so I can just say Here's a background, here's my character, put this character into this background and it's done. Since its release, people have been improving this model by training these small extra models for it called LORAS. Some of them just improve character consistency, some improve realism. But my favorite one is the next scene LORA by Lovis93. This one allows you to take an image and then just tell the model what the next scene will look like. Built on this foundation, I created a workflow for CompUI, a free node-based interface for AI models that allows you to plan out entire scenes shot by shot. To use it, first you need to install CompUI and we have a free guide for that on our website. Once it's installed, just download the workflow JSON file and drag and drop it into the CompUI interface. Now you might need to install a few missing custom nodes. To do this, simply go to the CompUI manager, click install missing custom nodes, Select all of them and click install. When it's done, restart ComfyUI and all the nodes should be here. Now you need to download the actual AI models and you can find all of them in these yellow nodes to the left of this workflow right here next to the model loader nodes. And you can see here I'm using a GGUF version of this model. GGUF is basically a way to compress model size so it can run on older GPUs that don't have a lot of VRAM. If you follow this link in the workflow you can see all the different GGUF versions and you should select a version that comfortably fits on your GPU's VRAM. I have 24 GB so I could easily run the Q8 version right here. But to show you more realistic results, for all examples that I've shown, I used this Q5 version right here that easily would fit on a 16 gigabyte VRAM card. So once you've downloaded the model that you want to use, you just need to go into your ComfyUI folder, ComfyUI, models, unit, and I've created my own GGUF folder right here and put everything inside here. Make sure to click R in ComfyUI to refresh the window and select the version that you want to use right here. Repeat this process for all the other LoRa's and models that I've added here. When you're done with this, you can start using the workflow. We are working from left to right, so let's zoom in on the top left right here. Here you can set your final image dimensions and I'm just using HD resolution, which works really great. Next, you can change the steps and the CFG, but you shouldn't change them because we're using this LoRa right here, the image lightning four step LoRa which will just speed up Gwen Image Edit so it can run on only four steps and then the CFG needs to be at one. And then we can create our scene name. This will then create a folder where all the images that we create here will be saved out to. I will call mine restaurant and maybe a version number. Because today I want to create one of these scenes that you see constantly in filmmaking but that are actually very hard to do with AI two characters interacting and talking to each other in one consistent location. And for this, we first need to load in our characters. And I just drag and drop them in. So we have this stylish model kind of woman here. And we have this man here with an interesting pattern on his suit or like his shirt here. Or you can upload a third reference, for example, a third character. Uh, I just loaded in my environment, though this is not usually the place to do it. You would do this here. I have this environment group right here. So just drag and drop in your location here. When you imported your references like this, you can go to the first image generation group. And now we need to create a prompt for what we want to see. In this case, I created a prompt. The characters are at a table in a restaurant. They are sitting opposite of each other, a cinematic movie scene with professional lighting. You see, it's a really simple prompt. And now we have to select 
the up to three references that we want to use. Here in these get image nodes, you can select the images that you want to use. The first image is image one. So I selected image one. We have image number two, that's him. So I loaded this here. And finally, down here, we have the environment. So I also loaded in the environment. If you want, you can also put like names in here. Maybe she's called Tina, I don't know. And then you can also see it changed in this get image node right here. It's good to keep things more organized like this so you don't lose track of what you're doing. But this is really all there is to it. So I just click run. And it's done and you can see our two characters are sitting at the exact table that we wanted them to. Now let's start actually building the next scenes. So I just activate this next group right here. This one uses the next scene Laura. So we can create a prompt like this. Next scene, the camera is behind the man creating an over the shoulder shot showing a frontal view of the woman smiling. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking the output image you can see down here, you can name the output for each group. This is out one. So I'm loading in out one right here. And then I'm also using this reference right here. And you can see this failed completely. We didn't rotate the camera. There is now an additional man. So we need to be a bit more specific in the prompt. What really helps is to describe the image in more detail. And instead of prompting how the camera moved, it really helps to describe where things are in space now. Half the photos obstructed by the man's back. The large window is to the right. Behind the woman to the left is a bar. And now we have a composition that's closer to what I originally wanted. What you can do now is just select this whole group and just copy it to create your next scene. Maybe we want to zoom in on this character's face. So all I need to do is switch this input here to out2 and we can rename this group right here to out3. Face fills the entire image just to make sure that we really want to be really close to her. And because now her look changed a little bit. So I'm connecting the original image, image number one here. I'm connecting that again to the prompt just to remind it what the woman really looks like. And now you can see it's a lot closer and the earrings are angular again. Now before we start building out the whole movie like this, let me show you the other features of this workflow. And you can find these down here. The first one is the option to use a pose reference. So let's say for example, we like this shot, but we want to make her drink from the glass of wine here in a specific pose. I found a reference image for exactly that. So I can just import that right here. And then I'm going to duplicate this group. And so just so we don't lose it, I will just copy the group, put it here. And next, let's name this something like this image pose wine come up here. We want to stay pretty close to this image right here. This is out too, so I will reference that here. And next, I'm going to select my wine pose reference and connect that. Now we just need to create a simple prompt like this. And now she's drinking from the glass of wine pretty close to the original input pose that we got from right here. I don't use this pose reference often because prompting usually is good enough. But if you have an exact composition in mind, this is a good way to reference that. But sometimes prompting is not enough. For example, when you want to change the camera angle and keep the backgrounds consistent. This can be quite the challenge with when image edit. So my idea was to generate a 360 degree image of the full environment so the model understands the full geometry of the scene. I tried creating such an image with Gwen image edit but unfortunately the results were not too good. So what I did is I created my own data set of 20 real 360 degree images and then use them to train my own Gwen image edit Laura. Showing Gwen image edit these real 360 degree images helped to train the model to understand what a real 360 degree image should look like. If you want to train your own Lauras, I will link the exact tutorial that I followed below. But all you need to do is just download my Laura and make sure in the beginning of the workflow that you load it in right here. And then you can come down here to this bottom group and this is where your full environment will be created. This will take your environment input image and add this gray area around that. This area will stay exactly the same and then around that Gwen image edit will now generate a 360 degree environment. To tell it what should be added in this gray area, you need to come here to this prompt and all you need to change is this part right here. And then it will create a really cool result like this. If you do not like that, you can always come down and change the seed or adjust the prompt. The problem with this image is that it is not seamless. 
To automatically fix this, I created this setup right here that will just lay out these images so you can see where the seam is. Then a white mask will be added and using this simple prompt, remove the visible seam, the seam will be removed from the image. We can use this environment in multiple ways to help Gwen image edit. For example, this image right here will be added together with our character references in the reference sheet group. So we have our full environment and we have our two characters. And you can see I already referenced it here, for example, for this over the shoulder shot. And this way, when we create a prompt like this, where we say the bar should be left and the window should be right. And this way, Gwen image edit can actually understand, oh, he's talking about a window that should be to the right of the character to the left should be a bar. So he must be talking about this area right here. And this worked really well. You can see it put the window to the right and the exact bar in the background. This reference sheet also helps to keep the characters more consistent because you're constantly reminding when image ed edit what they should look like. So let me quickly create the full scene and then I'm going to show you how I did it step by step. Okay, so here's the full scene. Let me quickly walk you through it. So in the beginning here, we create a simple base image. The characters are on at a table. And for this next scene, I rotated the camera. So it's behind the man looking at the woman sitting in front of the bar. And to help it keep the background even more consistent, what I did now is I added this group down here. This will take the 360 degree reference image that we created below. And it lets you cut out a part of the image using this mask right here that should be in the background. And then I connected this output right here to this group like you've seen, it worked before, but we had the issue that there were chairs um, in the background that were not supposed to be there. And now it's just a bit better. For the next scene, I did something similar. I wanted to create a close up of the man. But how should Gwen Image Edit know what the background should look like? Well, I just told it. So again, using this background reference image group, I was just able to think about where my characters are. So. The man should be sitting here, so this should be in the background, right? So I just cropped out this area right here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And then when you click run, you can see this part will be cropped out. I just connected that and I also referenced the input image of the man, image number two. And this is all what was needed to create this image right here. For the next scene, I wanted to create a close up of the man where he presents a ring. And down below here, you can see the prompt cut to an extreme close up of the man's hand presenting a ring. And I referenced the first output image. So this image right here. And I also referenced output three, which is the previous image right here. And sometimes using the simplest approach is the best one. For example, for this scene right here, for the kiss scene, I only referenced the first output image. And then I created this simple prompt. And that's all that is needed to make them kiss. The cool thing about building a modular story like this is that you can change out the location, style or character. So for example, I can just come in here back to the beginning and change out the woman, for example, and run this whole workflow again. And the workflow will automatically replace the woman with the older one from the reference image. Or we could change out the location. So maybe instead of having this cozy restaurant, we want to have this space diner right here. And now these two characters are sitting in a spaceship. So when you're done, you find all the output images that you created in ComfyUI output and the name of the folder that you gave it in the beginning of the workflow. So now let's actually make them move. You can use any video model that allows you to give a start frame and then generate the video based on that. And I tested Kling, VO3 and some other models. But if you want to do it locally, I recommend using my WAN 2.2 image to video workflow. You set this up in the exact same way as the previous workflow. Just drag and drop that in, click install missing custom nodes, and then you need to download these models right here. Once you have everything set up, you can decide if you want to use a start frame, an end frame or both to generate your video. Here, for example, I used both. This is my start frame and then I wanted these characters to move across the table to kiss each other. So I connected this here to the start image 
and this to the end image. You can set your resolution right here. This is the maximum one. If you don't have the best GPU, I would lower that. I would also lower the length. I'm using the maximum of 81 frames. And then all you need to do is create a simple prompt like this, where you mostly describe the action and the camera movement. Everything else will be extracted from the images. Now, if I want another variation, I can always come back here and change the seat or adjust the prompt. But you don't always have to use an input image and an end frame. You can also choose just to use a start frame or just an end frame. And that's what I did for this shot right here. I wanted the hand to open, but I only had this image of the open hand. So I connected this one to the end image and then just created a prompt like this. And I think it captured it perfectly. Now building a movie like this takes a bit of practice, but you'll soon get a hang of what kind of prompt structures and phrases Gwen Image Edit likes and understands. To help you out, you can also get the example scenes I created for this video if you support us on Patreon. You'll also get access to advanced workflows and our amazing Discord community. But most importantly, you help us keeping these workflows free for everyone and not having to rely on sponsors in every single video. So thank you a lot for that. So here are the final results for the demo scenes that I created. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this workflow useful. If you create a movie with it, feel free to tag me in your work or send it to me. I always love to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching and thank you to our lovely Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. See you next time.